Hello, everybody, and welcome to the uh, Reclaim Your Voice podcast. My name is O'Neill Gerald Donald, and I am the host of this wonderful, wonderful conversation where we are getting to uh, talk about all things singing and just how we can take your singing from unsure to unforgettable. Um, I know that uh, this is, whoa, this is the seventh episode. We're out, we're out here in these streets, we're claiming people's voices and such. <laughs> this is really cool. I love the conversations that we've been able to have. And um, there has been just, uh, just an evolving discourse that I know has been happening in my heart. And I know it's been happening for those of you that have been tuning in every week. Uh, if you are tuning in, let me know. Um, why don't you comment on the YouTube videos, uh, leave a review, on Spotify or wherever you're watching this. So I know that you're watching uh, because I know that we're developing a, a really important conversation. Now, this week is a really fun week because um, <laughs> um, I watched a wonderful movie, uh, a wonderful classic movie with my wife on Friday. And um, I, I watched the thing and I was like, oh my gosh, there are so many preaching points on this. Uh, believe it or not, um, it was my first time watching The Little Mermaid. I had I, I watched The Lion King. I've watched um, all sorts of Disney movies. I've seen, um, uh, what are the other, other Disney movies? Um, to Toy Story. Wait, that's Pixar. Um, uh, like Pocahontas is my favorite Disney movie. But I've never seen The Little Mermaid ever <laughs> uh, and um the little mermaid is my is my wife's favorite movie so we decided to watch it on friday and honestly the amount of reclaim your voice points to talk about i just was like oh my gosh we're talking about the little mermaid on this next podcast um now here's the thing um, I watched it once, so I'm still um, getting uh, getting better at re recounting the information. But essentially, um, the entire movie really is about the importance of Ariel's voice, if you actually really just zoom in on it. Now, I know we're, we're all like, you know, Ariel wants to go on, on the surface and she wants to, you know, be up there where the people are, <laughs> et cetera, and so forth. And just, um, and I'm wanting to be, and she... And spoiler alert, um, she ends up getting to walk where the humans are and, you know, dwell in the world that she's always wanted to live in. But the key for her to be able to actually get there was her voice. Ha! <laughs> and I'm going to sound like a preacher on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's okay. So I have five points um, that I was drawing, um, just some lessons from uh, The Little Mermaid that I think would help you in uh, understanding the relevance and the, and the significance of her voice. Because honestly, Ariel, as much as she's the heroine and just like, you know, the one that we're zooming in on for the, for the movie, um, there were a lot of unfortunate things that happened to Ariel because she didn't understand the weight and the impact and the, ins and the significance of her voice. And if she understood that, then um, she would have, uh, maybe she would have met Prince Eric a different way or um, been able to join his world in another way. Um, but uh, I wanted to really zoom in on the importance of Ariel's voice and what, and what I took from it. Um, so I have five points, um, just, uh, you know, would you indulge me as uh, we talk a little bit about The Little Mermaid um, and about the points that I got. So uh, point number one, if you take your voice for granted, you will lose sight of its value and give it to anyone who is willing to take it. Like, I want, I want you to sit on that for a little bit. Ariel was someone who, um, in the beginning of the movie, and I'm probably going to end up, you know, crossing in between points all, all over the place, but that's okay. Um, Ariel is someone for, that from the beginning of, of the movie didn't realize um, the significance of her voice. She would use it, but when it came time to even um, be in Sebastian's little uh, play or whatever, she was just like, you know, I'm just, you know, aspiring to be in such and such a place, you know? And uh, a lot of us are the same way, where we have uh, people that are telling us that our voice is amazing, people that are telling us that our voice uh, has potential and has impact, but uh, but we a lot of us are asleep 
in the uh when it comes to understanding the what our voice can actually do and understanding that our voice is not just some uh just some random sound that um you know you hear in uh in the white noise that is earth <laughs> and just everything that happens in the world but it is a is it's a significant uh sound it's a significant um uh, vi uh vibration in the ear that produces um uh, a level of impact to the people that are around us but ariel because she just sings just um you know all the time she wasn't able to really understand of the just understand the potential that she had to impact the people that are that were around her and thus when it came time for her to um to either choose whether to keep her voice or give it away she willingly gave it away because when um especially with a little bit of the push from ursula uh, she was able uh she she was fooled into thinking that the one thing that was needed for her was um, everything but her voice in order to be of impact to the one that she loved. And, um, and in thus, she was willing to give away the one thing part of her that actually had impact and if you and thankfully we've now already had the conversation of when your voice doesn't belong to you it was a three-part series that we did um earlier in the reclaim your voice podcast so if you have not already listened to those episodes i want you to go and listen to those episodes but because we now understand what it's like for your voice not to belong to you when we lose sight of the value of our voices when we lose sight of the fact that our singing voice actually has weight it has the potential to impact somebody uh we're gonna give it to any 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 type of situation without guarding um, without guarding its purpose. And uh, when you don't guard your voice's purpose, you end up using it for any which and ever any any and every opportunity that you um, are given. And you're not, you, you lose a sense of intentionality when it comes to using your voice you're you know singing for you know every single concert or you're singing for uh every single choral opportunity you know you're lending your voice to so many different things but you forget that your voice has uh the ability to carry your message the message that you have as a singer and not just the message that uh, somebody that that uh, and not this and not just the message that somebody else has uh, another songwriter or another composer or somebody else that's putting on a concert, but you have something to say. And uh, if we take away, if we take for granted um, uh, just that inner dialogue that we need to create in understanding what our message is and choosing songs, writing songs, and singing songs that are reflective of that message, we're just gonna give our voice away, just like Ariel did to Ursula, right? It's, and it's really unfortunate when you give your voice away because getting it back is an entire, it's, it's almost like, you know, when you give your voice away, you end up taking so many steps back and you wonder why you're so far behind in your development and your artist development. And it's because you're not actually using your voice for your own purposes, but for the purposes of somebody else, right? So um, that's my first point. If you, if you take your voice for granted, you will lose sight of its value and give it away to someone to someone anyone else who's willing to take it and now point number two from the little mermaid <laughs> um your voice is often more important than you give it credit for uh or more often than uh more important than what you give it credit credit for what i mean by that is that um uh in, even in the spirit of taking taking your voice for granted and not understanding um, how important your specific voice is, you, your voice, your singing, uh, how, how important your singing is, um, you can actually, um, you can actually l lose sight of, you know, of how important it actually is and actually and actually how important it is to other people that are looking to be impacted by you. Like when I look at Prince Eric, right? Um, and it was really powerful me, very powerful for me to watch. When I was watching it, I was just like, you know, quickening and just giving my hallelujahs because there were so many points. But when I looked at Prince Eric and when he finally was able to talk to Ariel or when he was able to, you know, uh, find Ariel on the seashore after the shipwreck or whatever it was, you know, um, Ariel had given her ways, given away her voice to Ursula. And um, she was now talking to uh, Prince Eric. Well, she wasn't talking. He was talking to her. He wasn't even able to truly recognize who she was because the one thing that was the most important about her was given away. Right. And so Ariel had her beauty. Ari ha Ariel had her looks. She had her legs. Right. Um, and, and she was now in the line of vision and able to 
to um to to actually talk to the man of her or interact with the man of her dreams but the one thing that would have sealed that love story her voice was no longer in her care and uh, and, and and to me that just says that like you know there's a lot of us that we take our voice because we take our voice our voice for granted we diminish its value and when we diminish our voice's value we don't actually see that people actually are really impacted by by our voices they actually are really and this kind of really blends with the first point it's just like you know there are people that are that are so impacted by what we do, what we say, um, and and the message that we have. Um, so like even like for the sake of the conversation, our voice and our singing is much deeper than just the musical sounds that we make, but the message that we share. And because we you know can you know take our message and our singing for granted, we can uh, lose the ability to actually impact the people that want to that want to um, hear from us the most, right? And, you know, we and especially in the pop and in music industry, you know, where there, it's almost it's always it's all about the five senses. It's like, you know, sight and sound and just like the experience, like being able to taste um, the artist's experience rather than just hear it. And because, you know, it's all about, you know, the right visuals, the right performance and choreography and all of, all of these different things, the essence of just a, 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 a pure musical sound being impactful to somebody is becoming a concept that's becoming more and more lost. And so just like Ariel, we can go to the glitz and the glamour. We can go to our um, Facebook profile, sorry, not really Facebook anymore, but our Instagram profiles, our TikTok profiles, and you know, all of the, you know, the hype of, you know, just um, the, of, uh, of being visually stimulated. And we use all of those things, not realizing that the people that are, that we're most called to impact will be impacted through our song and impacted through uh, the proper stewarding of our voice. Now, um, we can't be impactful with our song if our, we're losing our voice every week, right? Right. So that's why we, um, that's why I'm here to actually help you to start on the journey of stewarding your voice and of, excuse me, taking care of your voice and, and, and sharing your message sustainably, right? So that's another part of the conversation. But when it comes to actually just understanding the importance of our uh, of our singing voice in and of itself and the impact that 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 it has it it far exceeds all of the you know the 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 just the the hair and the the and the outward beauty and all of those things can actually impact people but there's people that are out there that are looking for your sound and not just for what and not just what you look like and and a lot of the time we can get caught up in just like, you know, the uh, the presentation of everything and, you know, presenting the sound is that we that we lose the sound altogether. And that's what Ariel that's what Ariel did. And it was all because she was deceived by Ursula. Right. Right. So your voice is more often is more important than than uh, is more important than um, than you give it credit for. And the people that were called to impact and in Ariel's in an Ariel's instance in Ariel's situation, it was Prince Eric that she was supposed to impact. Um, some people can just, you'll, you'll completely miss them uh, because you're not wearing your message and you're not wearing your song on your sleeve, right? And what, what, what do I mean by that, actually? Uh, what do I mean by you're not wearing your song on your sleeve? It's like, you know, when it comes to, even if we're talking about performance, you know, you're so busy um, uh, creating the package for the music, that the music has no substance. Or um, that can be in terms of songwriting, in terms of the actual lyrics that you're delivering. But in terms of sound, you know, the, like, the, we can spend so much time presenting the package that the actual song and the actual sound that you're giving is subpar, <laughs> right? Like a lot of people, uh, like, like because we have Melodyne and Autotune on all of these different tools, you know, we spend so much time you know, um, making the sound like this robotic package that we don't actually spend time um, actually working on the voice that we're given that that we're given. And so, you know, we work on music videos, we work on having great production and all these different things. But at the end of the day, and it is sadly the case in a lot of, of singers these days, they actually can't sing. Right. And honestly, there's there, there, there the level of impact that you can make when you sing your message well is worth the investment and of time and it's worth the investment of money as well right 
So that's my second point. Third point, uh, there are people who understand your voice's value more than you. And if you put yourself in their care, they will use you as much as you will let them, often in the form of a contract or agreement. And this is where we get to talk about Ursula stealing, um, uh, not even stealing, this is the preachy part. <laughs> Ursula didn't even steal Ariel's, Ariel's voice. Ariel willingly gave it away because she because she lost the value uh, or lost the understanding of the value of her voice. Her voice never lost value. But in her own perception, she, her voice didn't have any value. And therefore, it was worthy of being given away to someone else who had a better use for it. And... and Ursula knew the knew the knew the power of the voice. She was watching Ariel's, you know, little um, uh, romantic situation with Prince Eric the whole time. She knew that Prince Eric was into Ariel's voice, right? But Ariel didn't. She was just like, you know, I just want to be there, and I I, I see this per I see this person. I just want to uh, be into them, etc. And so forth. And Ariel got so caught up in trying to impress that she was willing to give away the one thing that actually was that was actually of impact. But Ursula knew that that Ariel's voice was the most important thing, and so she took Ariel's voice, right? And then she um uh become she tries to become uh uh well first of all like we th thankfully Ariel was able to somehow start to you know impact Eric, but. But Ursula, with the one thing that was of most value, was able to slide in um, with uh, to slide in and interrupt Ariel's romance. Remember, you know, Ur Ursula becomes this whole brunette, um, shows up uh, uh, and to to swipe away um, uh, Prince Eric because she had Ariel's voice. Right. Isn't that that's crazy? Right. Like and, and how does that apply to us? Right. Um, if you look if you look at it all like and I and I spoke about it, about the people that you give your your, your voice away to uh, the music directors, the band directors, the the record, the, the record executives, you know, um, the people that run the concerts, et cetera, and so forth. These are all people that know the value of voices. And when they hear a voice that is impactful, um, they will take the voice and use it for for whatever their purpose is. And the thing is. We do live in the age of the independent artists where people are able to, you know, take their own um, take their own sound and market it to the world, et cetera, and so forth. But these people got money. OK. And uh, with the and, and with the money and uh, with the monetary power that um, they carry, they can um, give you a whole bunch of things. And, the, and we're talking about in the con in the context of like maybe even a record deal. You know, they're able to take your voice. Use it for whatever uh, whatever purpose they 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 want, and then give you uh, a glamorous lifestyle. When the but the ownership of the thing that is most important belongs to them. But because they give you glitz and glamour, and you don't understand the value of your voice, you give it away, right? And you just sign it away, like Ariel did. Like that. Um. Like I I think of people like for example JoJo who recently got her voice back, right? Uh, but uh, on on paper, JoJo, um, get out right now, you know, JoJo, her. Um, on paper, her voice did not even belong to her, right? And if you and if you do your research, there are a few other artists that were in contracts like that. Um, even Aaliyah, right? She, there's, a, I think, believe in uh, an Aaliyah. Why do I keep doing this? Anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm swiping my finger upwards for those that are listening. But anyway, <laughs> um, but... Um, there was an Aaliyah album that even came out, and uh, and in fact, a lot of Aaliyah's music was um w was um wasn't able to be released because of the contract that was signed on on uh, under Black Round Records. Like JoJo had the same situation. Now, thankfully, she was able to find a breach in the contract, but that's the type of ownership that these people are having. And like like thankfully, I don't think I, I don't think people um. They don't have those types of contracts anymore, but they also do. Like it's like we, I, I would like to believe that those contracts don't exist anymore. But you still hear of you know artists that can't release their songs and can't release their music because their label said so, right? And that type of ownership is not something that you deserve. Now, 
there are people that have uh, great contracts where um, they understand their power and they were able to negotiate on that level. But there's so many people that are signing things that they don't understand. And a lot of you, because you don't have the validation that is that is on the inside that comes from you to actually say, you know, my voice is, a worse, is worth something. Someone else, like their own little Ursula, can say, oh yeah, you're this and you're that. And you're like, oh my gosh. And you sign away your life to somebody else and give ownership to them um, without understanding the true value that you have, right? And these people are going to use your voice for their own uh, purposes, take over the world if you're Ursula, right? Uh, for for uh, for and use the, use your voice use your voice for their purposes. And your voice was given to you for a particular message, right? That 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 you're supposed to say that shouldn't be controlled by someone else, right? Anyway, yeah, that's that that's my third point. Listen. The Little Mermaid is an entire preach. If you haven't watched The Little Mermaid in a little bit, go watch it. I have I rented it for like a month, so I think I'm gonna watch it again. But anyway, um, okay. Point number four. Uh, when and I think this is tied to point number three. Uh, when we are convinced of our voices' insignificance, we will lose sight of the opportunities we have to be of service to others and, and make impact. Everyone forgets that at the beginning of the movie, <laughs> Ariel was supposed to be singing in Sebastian's band. Now. Sebastian, of course, wanted to control Ariel a little bit, and and her father wanted to control Ariel. So let let's 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 be honest about that. But but Ariel was so busy lusting after another world that she failed to realize that her voice had impact where she was. Now now it I don't think it's wrong to actually aspire to be you know somewhere else and you know want to and want to dream and be somewhere else. And in fact, that's how we um that that's how we propel ourselves forward by being pulled by the future. Um, Gay, Gay Hendrix talked about that with the big leap. That's another story. <laughs> but um uh, what am I saying? I'm saying that like it's safe to 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 be pulled some to to be pulled somewhere. But if you fail to see the impact that your voice has where you are now, you're not gonna see it when it's time to get over there. Like, think about it this way. Ariel did not did not see the impact of her voice in Sebastian's band. People loved Ariel's voice. And she has an amazing voice. You know, she was able to, Im to to bring impact. But because she didn't understand that, she was just like, you know, letting these opportunities to serve with her voice, you know, just go here, there, and everywhere. So when it came time to actually be challenged in the value of her voice, Ariel was willing to just give it away. <laughs> right? Ah, this is just, like, it's, it, it's crazy, right? Like, a lot of us are just convinced of our voice's insignificance and life circumstances, trauma, et cetera, and so forth. Like they can have a way of, of, of giving us these inner facts. I like to call them, uh, that say that, uh, that say, for example, that our, our voice is never going to impact somebody or we'll only be able to sing ever so high or just a whole bunch of different, uh, pieces of foolishness uh, that present that, that present themselves to to convince us that our singing is of no value when in reality there are specific people that are called to be impacted by our voice and and by us showing up for our singing right like if we just showed up for the like before even uh, aspiring to go somewhere else why don't we just grow where we're planted like but but a lot of us are not even satisfied with where we are, right? Or or satisfied with the opportunities that we have. And so we don't use the opportunities that we have. We just, um, you know, put put it all into um, someday. Uh, and and um, uh, we want to be over there. And we don't want to be over here. If you're <laughs> watching uh, uh, Mike Todd uh, and Transformation Church right now, here is holy. Anyway, um, but point is... Um, like the when you're, when we're convinced of our voices insignificance, we'll lose sight of the opportunities uh, that we have to be of service to others and serve with our voices. Right before you get to a million, you have to be able to serve a hundred thousand. Before the hundred thousand, it's the thousand. Before the thousand, it's the hundred. Before this, a hundred, it's the one. It's the same thing with you know uh, YouTube channels, etc. and so forth. People don't know how to actually stick with being impactful with the people that are around them and allow, you know, allow God to bring expansion to the impact. Like when you're dissatisfied 
and you live in the dissatisfaction the dissatisfaction of where you are you're never going to be satisfied no matter where you no matter where you go Woo! that's a preach wait let me see if i can say it a little bit a little bit quicker when you're dissatisfied with where you are and you're con when you're constantly dissatisfied with where you are you will never be satis satisfied with where you go why because you have never learned to be content and to um uh i guess what's the word um just leverage the relationships and the opportunities that you have to be of impact and when you don't know how to do that where you are you won't do that no matter where you go right anyway and my fifth and final point like i'm just gonna leave that there and yes the little mermaid is entire preach but yes uh my fifth and last point people are not looking uh people are looking to be impacted by a meaningful voice and not glitz and glamour like going back to prince eric prince eric he thought that the girl was beautiful he thought ariel was beautiful but at the end of the day it was her voice that mattered and i'm telling you if you are an artist and you are trying to skip over uh, the the um, the improvement of your voice because you're ignoring your vocal problems, then you're actually setting yourself up to be heavily disappointed uh, when people experience experience you live. And if you're dissatisfied with where you are vocally in terms of you know being able to sustainably use your voice uh, because you're carrying your voice out of it's um, out of its boundaries, out of its territory, and you're consistently losing it. And so you, um, and, and, and so, but you just play pretend as if nothing's ever happening. You're going to set up yourself to also be disappointed, right? This this podcast is about the wake up call. It's about understanding that we can't just continue our lives with mediocrity or continue our singing lives and continue our vo and, and continue using our voices with a level of mediocrity. It's never going to get us anywhere and it's not going to do what we need, uh, what we need, um, what we need it to do. So I'm here as your residential vocal coach to help you to actually make the transition to, um, you know, using to being constrained in your singing to actually being free in your singing to be uh, to go from having um, no autonomy over your voice, but to being able to know what your voice is doing, its relationship with your body, and how you can actually um, uh, cor correct your own problems. So what I want you to do is, if that's if that sounds like where you're at, I want you to give me a call at reclaimyourvoice.ca slash call. Book a call with me. And there we're gonna be able to have a voice breakthrough call and really get to the bottom of what's not working in your singing journey right now. Because we don't have time to just uh, continue to leave uh leave improving your voice to to later because especially if you're listening this far in the podcast is this is like it's your calling this is your calling this isn't just something that somebody just you know uh, suggested that you maybe want to do this is something that you're passionate about right and if you this is hitting your heart if it's striking your heart don't hesitate Book a call with me at reclaimyourvoice.ca slash call and let's have this conversation. I hope that you guys got something from my little mermaid rant. <laughs> and I really hope that um, this is something that you'll be able to carry with you into your singing lives. Uh, but until next time, I want you to subscribe to this YouTube channel for the Reclaim Your Voice podcast. It's its own channel. Um, it's, it's got its own home on YouTube. So subscribe if you're watching this. Uh, and I also want you to uh, follow this podcast on wherever you're listening to this podcast, Spotify. Apple Podcasts or, or wherever you're listening to this. I want you to subscribe, give this thing five stars and uh, leave a review. Anyway, uh, my name is O'Neill Gerald Donald and I will see you all. Ugh, I do it. I did it again. I, I actually genuinely do it when I do it, but I'm not going to see you, but you will hear me on the next Reclaim Your Voice podcast. We're going to get it one time. Anyway, I'll talk to you all later. Bye, everyone.